Good morning, Washington State Housing Community. This is Amanda Polly with DVHR, and I am happy today to present to you um, Ms. Becky Boutillier with uh, DSHS presenting to us another one of these wonderful housing resources we're all contributing to called Pathways to Housing. Um, it's, it's always really nice to have um, a new resource in our community and the ability to be able to navigate through that with a little bit of help. So um, Becky comes to us from DSHS. She's um, a fantastic, <clears throat> pardon me, She's um, a fantastic uh, uh, purveyor of, of this website. In fact, she helped us build it. <laughs> and so there's nobody better to present this to you and explain to you how it works. So Becky, I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to you. And I hope that um, if anybody has questions, please feel free to raise your hand or uh, field those questions through the chat box and we'll be happy to answer them as we can. Good morning, everyone. This is Becky Boudelier with Research and Data Analysis at DSHS. Thanks for the introduction, Amanda. Um, on your screen today, you should be seeing the homepage to the Washington State Pathways to Housing web application. This application is what we refer to as a sister app to the Washington State Pathways to Employment application. Housing being a priority for this year's body of work for us here at DSHS in partnership with the Healthcare Authority. I'm going to go through the website with you and show you some of the features that are currently in place, how the website acts, how, how you can get information on the website, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the things that we're getting ready to add into the website to enhance its ability to support housing needs for people across Washington State. Um, the homepage that you're looking at now is the Pathways to Housing one-stop resource to help you navigate the world of housing. This particular homepage also includes on it, in the lower right-hand corner, a list of acronyms. Um, as you know, we in state government seem to really like to use them, so we've added a list to help you define the terminology. We have a contact us option on the home screen that allows users to email a shared inbox between the healthcare authority and the Department of Social and Health Services. If you contact us there and the question you ask is technical in nature, I or one of my staff will respond. If the questions you send to the contact us box are about program operations, then we refer that to the experts at the Healthcare Authority to follow up on. Um, we included keyboard, a keyboard commands feature that allows um, use for people who have disability so that they don't necessarily have to use the mouse to be able to get around on the website. We, of course, have our required protecting your privacy information to show that we are in fact compliant with the various regulations that um, oversee how we use data and how we give you access to information. Another element that we added to the website is the capacity to on-demand print the brochure that gives us information about the pathways. This is a nice little trifle that you can take to conferences with you that you can use just in your general outreach to refer people to the website. Um, I'm, I'm showing you that the bottom page looks like it's upside down, but let me tell you that that was intentional so that when it's printed, it comes out the right way. So that when you fold it up, the pages show the way they're supposed to for easy reading. Um, so we have this available. All you have to do is click on the link to get to it. Um, and then if you need an acrobat reader to be able to print the brochure, to see the brochure, um, we've included a link so that you can download the free Adobe Reader. We also have on the lower portion of the screen supports that tell you how to use the website, a site map, and depending upon color preferences, you can also go in and change your theme so that it's just more aesthetically pleasing to your eyes. Or if you have challenges with seeing certain colors, you can change the themes to make them easier for you to read. The default color is, of course, blue. So that, um, that's the content on the home page. If we go to the menu on the far left column, obviously we have the categories of information. We like to call these modules. Um, the first being the homepage, the second being our financial wellness page. So I'm gonna click on this. 
um, to show you tools to help you manage your household. On the financial wellness tab, we have a income income limit by house by health household calculator that lets you learn what income limits are for your county based on your family size to help see if you qualify for income subsidies like Section 8 housing or tax credit housing. This is really simple to use. You just put in your estimated annual income and you put the number of people who live in your family and the county that you live in and click on calculate. It will tell you what your income limit is for your size of your family and the percentage of income limit that you're at. It also provides information about um, subsidies required, income to be at 30 to 50 percent, and it gives other resources to learn about available low income housing options. The next tab that's available is your household budgeting tool. So obviously manage your money is an important aspect of securing housing. This is a tool that lets you um, do some budgeting and it also links you into a number of free budgeting resources um, to help you deal with, you know, how do you save money? Uh, how do we get uh, finance, financial education? Um, how do we help people with disabilities get savings accounts going and so on? We also have a tab here that addresses credit talks about the important part of having a good credit standing, how to understand um, the process for checking your credit and if necessary, repairing it. Um, we have hyperlinks to Fair Credit Reporting Act information, in, uh, guidance on how to rebuild credit, um, a place where you can get a free credit report, and then contacts to the three credit reporting agencies on this particular tab. That, that, those are the existing resources for uh, the financial wellness part of the application. Um, again, if you have questions about anything I've reviewed so far, you can certainly add them into the chat session uh, window and we will follow up and get back to you on any questions you might have. I'm going to next move to the application, the rental application builder. Um, this is a tool that lets you enter and retain copies of your personal information on another storage device. Um, in other words, when you fill out the online rental application builder, we do not collect and retain the data in the state data system. Um, you can save the output from this process down to your computer or to another device as you make your way through the process. Again, we do not retain your personal information in the state system. So filling out one page at a time, you're going to put in your applicants and your occupants information. The next page asks you for rental history information, then employment history information, for references and credit history, general information, and then creating the report that you can then save elsewhere. Um, this is intended to help you complete this information once and then print it on demand for your um, to support uh, rental application uh, processes when you're looking to locate housing. Moving to the supported housing services page. Here, um, this is all intended to be uh, available to help you find housing or keep housing that you currently have. So. Um, it gives some examples of the types of supports that you may be eligible to receive and some information on how to find out if you actually qualify for supported housing services. Tells you what information to gather so that you can go begin your um, research into that. It also provides a link to the Washington Foundational Community Amerigroup, Community Supports through Amerigroup, um, and this is a a uh, way to find a FCS provider or to search a doctor tool. And so this is just a hyperlink to the existing um, business partner for the healthcare authority. Um, there are multiple ways to apply. Um, from this screen, you can click the link here and start your application. We have a quick reference guide 
um, for making referrals. And then if one is homeless or pending homelessness, a way to contact help for coordinated entry, um, which is a really valuable first step in getting connected. Uh, in addition, sorry, I scrolled the wrong way. There's contact information for Amerigroup, um, both for their phone line, um, their TTY phone, and an email address for them presented on this screen. We've also provided information on HUD resources so we can um, show you how to find affordable housing, find a local HUD office, um, the local pu public housing authority, um, other homeless resources that may be in the area. And so you can click on this HUD resource link locator and it will help you to access the, the HUD or the HUD resources in your area. Obviously, you're going to get the, the big screen map and then you can focus in on your particular area and get that, oops, get that air, that information as it pertains to where you live. Going back to the screen, um, we list the hyperlinks to the other HUD or HUD resources uh, on this on this particular page shown. Clicking next will move you to the history screen, which is it's about how do you um, know more about supporting housing and how it has an impact on reducing homelessness. So you can see various links here, thriving in the community, making history, making an impact. These are all informational pieces just to help you see how the whole thing ties together. So that is the, the existing contact content on supportive housing. Now I'm going to move over to the provider resources page. And here we have um, peer training that's available to help you with professional development in permanent supportive housing. So uh, you can go to this website and you can take the online training. Um, it is broken up into modules. Each one holds different contact that will help you with your efforts to, to work into supportive housing and recovery. All this stuff is online and will give you the credits that you need. I'm not going to go into every training module. I'm afraid that that would take much longer than we have scheduled for this presentation. But just want to make you aware that there are currently four modules of training available. And we want to make sure that we're able to support the continuing education opportunities for peers working in permanent supportive housing. The provider tab also under this area of the website shows information about um, the permanent supportive housing training and technical uh, assistance that's available. Uh, it'll connect you to on-site training, um, fidelity reviews, regional training events, uh, monthly webinars, and custom trainings fitted to the needs of your organization. And you can contact FCS through this link that we've included on the page. And the other tab for this part of the website are the seven dimensions of permanent supportive housing. And it talks about the various dimensions that are covered. And it uh, provides you a link to download the PSH toolkit, which I can click on that link. And you can see that it takes you to SAMHSA. I'm going to close that. And, it'll, and you can see the wide variety of tools that are offered at the EBP kit site for evidence-based practices. The idea here is not so much for us to recreate content, but to provide a path to where all that information lives across the various organizations that are doing the work of supported housing. So um, we kind of look at this website as a starting point for digging into the information resources that are available to you. Moving to the veterans page, we have pieces here on um, assistance that are available to veterans uh, and the Washington State um, code that covers providing supports to our veterans communities. Uh, on, the left, on the center column here, we've included information for the crisis line for veterans. And we talk, and we also have links to various DSHS um, resources to support, support vets, a link to the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs, and one to the Wounded Warrior Project. 
We also uh, have some help links included uh, for addressing post-traumatic stress. Uh, you can see from looking at the screen that there are a number of things here that will help you uh, to include a psychology works fact sheet, some DHA connected health options, and programs in Washington State to help you deal with uh, PS, PTS. Rather. Then, of course, because it's Pathways to Housing, we're going to go into what kinds of services might be available to support our veterans who are without homes. Again, Washington Veterans, uh, veterans Administration, um, information from them about the GI Housing Allowance Calculator, the Veterans Information from the HUD, Low Income Housing Institute, Homes for Vets, hey, Becky. and Housing for Veterans. Sorry to, yes. sorry to interrupt you, Becky, but it seems that um, people are losing audio. So um, just, just oh. one quick second. Um, okay. I just want to send out an, a message to everybody and see if um, if everybody's having an issue with audio. I apologize for interrupting. Just getting a lot of yeah, no problem feedback at all. really fast. Um, okay, I, I'll you, Can you guys see? That's okay. Can you guys hear us okay? Um, or I, I, let's see. I do not. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, so... Okay. All right. Great. Go ahead, Becky. Go ahead. Um, I think if anybody's having audio, it might be an issue on their end. So um, if you need to pull out and then go back in and come back in, please feel free to do so. Um, I apologize, Becky. Thank you so much for being patient. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so as we were saying, I'm just kind of wrapping up the housing assistance support page for the veterans resources. Um, we also have another resources tab for veterans available. And we'll open that page and just show you that there are e-benefits, how to explore VA benefits. This happens to be the federal VA site. Um, how to contact the Institute for Veterans and Military Families and the University of Washington Veterans Education Benefits. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, these are just a few of the things that we have in line for vets. I would say that as our users become familiar with the Pathways to Housing website, if you come across other resources that might be um, beneficial for inclusion in this site, let us know. We're interested in exploring those options. We want to make this your best first stop to dig into this type of information for anything that we're presenting on the website. One of the things that we used in our Pathways to Employment application, which was intended to help people with disabilities um, realize the benefits of going to work and the ability to retain their medical coverage, were um, posting up videos of success stories for other people who have overcome their employment issues. This part of the Pathways to Housing, or the success stories part of the Pathways to Housing web, web application also has a series of videos that are available on the internet that talk about other individuals who've had housing challenges, who've been homeless, and who've taken action to do something about it. And so what we do is we add videos to this, we change them up to keep them fresh. Um, these tend to be very inspirational to people who are just starting their journey to housing, um, helping them see that other people in similar situations have been able to achieve housing and um, the feedback that we've gotten from our focus groups on the success stories has been very, very positive. So obviously, um, perhaps not so much for those individuals who are assisting others to acquire housing, but refer your clients that you're trying to support to this part of the website to give them a sense of hope about how they can make a difference um, if they utilize the tools that are being provided. Another aspect of finding housing is to be well informed about your rights about tenant rights. And so the first tab on the Know Your Rights section of the website includes things like, what happens, what do you do if you are denied rental because you have a, uh, a history involvement of involvement with law enforcement? How do you appeal a denial for access to housing? So there's a sample letter out there. What do you do if you need to involve a landlord mitigation process, so we refer you over to the Department of Commerce to get assistance from them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we also include a copy of the Landlord-Tenant Act, which is the Washington state law that protects both tenants and landlords. We keep a Justice Project hyperlink here. We provide information about reasonable accommodations. 
We have a renter's guide, which includes tips for tenants, another hyperlink for tenant resources through the Office of the Attorney General. You can see there's quite a lot of information on their website. And we have the Tenants Union for Washington State. So this helps um, you look for finding other resources to support you in your effort to locate housing and to inform yourself about what your rights might be as a tenant. We also have a page here for landlords and we've got a few resources there. Um, again, information about their mitigation program, the Tenant Act and reasonable accommodations. Um, it's my understanding that we'll be building more and more data into this portion of the Know Your Rights page. We also have a tab here that talks about fair housing. And we have um, connections to the ACLU, what to do about a criminal record, Fair Housing Center, Fair Tenant Screening Act details, the Human Rights Commission on Fair Housing, the Legislative Advocacy Resources, and a few other um, items that you could look at to assist you with knowing your rights for the Pathways to Housing site, excuse me, and, and your uh, journey into housing. And then the last tab um, that I'm going to show you is our, we, we call it the More Tools tab. It's basically a catch-all for everything we want to share with our users that isn't directly related to one of the preceding subjects we covered. So 211, Get Connected, Get Answers, um, Alternative Dispute Resolutions, the Northwest uh, Justice Project, and the Washington Law Help Eviction Resources site. This is all information that's intended to help people who have a history of being justice involved. Um, we have another page here for tenants, which is, again, a direction to the Landlord-Tenant Act and to a website for tenant resources. Same information available to landlords on ending veterans' homelessness, landlord resources, and again, the Landlord-Tenant Act. We have a tab here for wellness and recovery. So this is how we get to find a course. So if you're looking for a mental health first aid course, you can go to this site, NAMI, or the local affiliates in Washington State. So the list for their contacts. And then the peer support, the Healthcare Authority peer support site. So you can learn more about what peer counseling is and how it can be beneficial. And then our last page on the website this morning is our various tools that we put out there that can be um, useful in various situations for the people that we're trying to support. Again, um, you know, we don't want to host all of their information in our site. We want to give you a shortcut avenue to find that information to make it as beneficial as possible to you. Those are the current features of the Pathways to Housing website that I wanted to share with you today, but I'd also like to take a minute and let you know about some of the items that we're going to be adding in the near future. Um, so we have a list of things that are going to be, um, we have a bunch of checklists that we're adding that will help with supported housing, things like apartment review checklists, um, um, uh, a log for when you go on a housing search that people can download and fill out so they can keep track of everywhere they've applied and, and uh, inspection reviews and um, uh, tools that identify income limits to qualifying, excuse me, I'm on the wrong document here, landlord outreach and engagement information that we're going to be adding to the site. Um, we're going to be adding some information about um, links to be able to make it easier to navigate the web pages and um, we're going to add in some additional uh, forms that will just enhance the overall operations for the site. Um, so I would encourage you to bookmark the page to Pathways to Housing. Um, when you're searching on the website, look for Washington Pathways to Housing. Um, Pathways to Housing seems to be a pretty popular title out on the internet, so 
um, you'll want to make sure that you use pa Washington State Pathways to Housing or Washington Pathways to Housing to have the best luck um, with the various browsers that are being used. And again, if you have questions about how the website works, or if you have questions about the programs and you use the Contact Us uh, feature on this website, we will get back to you. Um, my team and I generally will respond within, um, I would say, an acknowledgement email within 20, 24 to 48 hours that we've gotten your message and that we'll be getting a hold of you. Generally, we have a resolution to any questions or technical issues within, I would say, seven days um, in the worst case scenario. Um, when you ask us questions about programmatic related things, we refer those to our partners over at the Healthcare Authority and then they will respond according to their normal response times. And I'm not trying to commit them <laughs> to when they get back to you all. Um, that is a pretty high level overview of the Pathways to Housing website. I see that you've got some questions um, and I, uh, I also see that uh, my partners over at Healthcare Authority are doing a pretty good job of answering. If you come up with additional questions about the Pathways to Housing website at the end of this presentation, you certainly can use the Contact Us option to submit those to us and we'll review them and get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, I, th that pretty much wraps up the information that I planned on sharing this morning. Um, again, I would say bookmark the site and come back and visit us um, on a routine basis because we continue to add content and we do welcome your feedback. Amanda, are you on the line? I am on the line. I am okay. trying to field questions as we speak. <laughs> um, so I, I did notice um, that, and I'll go ahead and read off some of the questions. If, um, if you want to address one specifically, Becky, um, if that's okay. Um, there is sure. a question from, let's see here. Um, there is a question from one of our attendees and uh, let's, there's a lot of questions from attendees. Give me just one second, see if I can pull through that. And um, they mentioned asking about one of our, um, I apologize, a lot of ums here. Okay, so the application for, um, and I'm assuming this is from Gary Norton. So um, Gary had mentioned uh, the application for the client, the rental application builder, I'm assuming. Um, mm -hmm. Can um, can this be done with our uh, our clients, and can it be printed off to give to them? Yes, that's the objective. In order for them to utilize, yes. And so I I wanted to make sure before I was like, sure you can, and and yeah. make sure that you were able to answer that question for us. Do you um do you have any suggestions yeah. on how to do that, Becky? Well, you can fill it out online to the to the fullest extent possible, and then just when you finish filling it out online, even if you don't have it completed, you can just go to the last tab, tab which is the report tab, and click on the view rental application in the selected format. For example, I'm going to select the PDF format, and it'll compile that document for you and present it to you. If you want to give it to them blank, um, if you see the screen right now, it'll show you what it looks like. And it can be filled out manually as well, um, but this is this is what the form looks like. So if you want to fill it out, um, as if you're doing it for another person, you can fill in the pieces you know, and then they can just pencil in the rest. Um, because we don't retain this information in the system here, um, I think that that uh, you'll want to fill out as much of it, uh, of it as you have access to, uh, just so it looks better but certainly you could take this and, and move it into a Word document and expand on it and then, and or the user could do that, the customer, and um, have it available for use over and over again as they look at different uh, rental opportunities. And again, um, having the Adobe application for downloading is an important aspect of that. And I've managed to lose Thank my Thank you, mind. Becky. There we go. Okay. Uh, 
Um, so Becky, is this site going to be Google searchable in the future? Yes, we're working with Washington uh, Watech to find out why um, there are some challenges with it being Google searchable. Um, we've encountered intermittent issues with that. It is something that we continue to work with them on. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there were um, a handful of panel uh, panelists, excuse me, attendees who were having a difficult time um, opening the page to the link that we provided, um, and then manual entry as well. So we all know that sometimes the interwebs can be um, a very precarious thing, and um, an unknown entity that we can't exactly tame all the time, <laughs> despite how much we try. Certainly, if people have specific questions about Pathways to Housing that they want to um, ask and they don't get an opportunity to ask them today, they can also, again, use the Contact Us option on the website, or you can contact me at becky.boodleer at dshs.wa.gov. I'm going to spell my name, B-E-C-K-Y dot B-O-U-T-I-L. I E R at DSHS dot W A dot G O V and I'll do my best to get back to you without delay. Thank you so much, Becky. We really appreciate that. Does anybody else have any immediate questions that they would like to have um, Becky address for them? Um, you're welcome to type them in, raise a hand. Um, whatever whatever works for you specifically. Just waiting to see if anything pops up, Becky. So, I personally found that this website has been a real um, a real lifesaver. It's nice to have it as a sister site, um, and to be able to say, hey, you know, this is how it links up through employment, and these are all the wonderful things that you can use. I specifically love the success stories page, Becky. Um, and all of the hard work that was put into that. It's it's really refreshing to look on a website and see all these uh, fantastic resources and all this really great information and then be able to see the successes that come around that. So um, for all of our attendees out there who are listening, we love, we love, love, love supportive housing success stories. So um, if you are willing to um, send us stories, and um, your successes for your participants and yourselves, be them housing or employment or both, especially if they're foundational community supports, we would really love to have those. Um, and I am going to, let's see, I'm going to send out, I have, um, Becky, I'm gonna send out your, I wanna send out your email again, okay. if that's okay. Sure. And it's B-O-U-T-I-B. At dshs.wa.gov. Is that the one you want to use? Or Becky. No, Becky. Oh, right. Boudelier at. They're encouraging us to get off that old email. Right, right, right. Okay. Dot b o u t i l i e r. D is in boy. Yes. Boutilier. Yes. Got it. All right. And then send to all. There we go. And there's Becky's email, everyone. And could, uh, and then we've got another question here. Um, could we please tell me exactly what SCS does for the client? Um, I would be so happy, Reginald, to talk to you all about SCS. However, right now is not all about SCS, it's about this fantastic website. So I'm gonna send you my email, um, Reginald, and I am going to be more than happy to discuss at length with you about foundational community supports and supportive housing and employment and how that all can really wrap around and work for you. Um, so, uh, and he also may want to, excuse me, Reginald, you may also want to just hit the, hit the uh, website under the supportive housing services, and there's a link to FCS there that will take you right into their website, and they provide a ton of information on that page. Yay. Okay. Okay, so um, just looking, is there a certificate of completion for this webinar? Unfortunately, Andrea, there isn't, but we will be sending um, out a follow-up email with information and links. And so, if you, if you, um, if you need something to prove that you were you were part of this, 
um, I would suggest just maybe printing out that email. It'll have my, uh, my signature on it as well as DBHR's information and everything that it, this was about. So it goes out to all of our registrants. Um, it'll also, um, this, this email, the follow-up email will also include um, the audio recording um, of the session and um, any follow-up information that we can or any unanswered questions, um, and we'll address those questions in the email as well. So um, that would be the, the best thing I could do for you. So um, you're quite welcome, Reginald. And um, can we use this practice at work to expedite getting an outcome? Um, let's see here. So Sandy, Sandy Christian asked, can you give us an example of the best practices that work to expedite getting an outcome? Sandy, I don't, um, is this more of a question towards supportive housing or is this more of a question towards utilizing the Pathways website? Because I'm having, um, I don't understand what outcome you're looking for. You want me to, Sandy, would you like me to pull you off of mute so you can speak? Housing. Okay, so um, again, this would be a really, uh, this is all Q&A at this point, Ellen. Um, so at this point, um, I would I would really love to have this conversation with you, Sandy, um, and um, I'll connect with you if you'd like. Through email, we can have a conversation over the phone. And, and move forward with that. But unfortunately, um, this time is really specifically for Becky and Pathways to Housing. So, um, you know, and we definitely want to honor everybody's time and make sure everybody has an opportunity to ask questions about the site itself and how it can be useful to their participants and landlords and agencies. Does anybody else have any other questions? Do you have anything you'd like to add, Becky? No, I don't. I don't think so. Um, at this point, I'll just be looking forward to hearing from participants with any suggestions they may have about um, things we could add to uh, increase the value of it to our to our users across Washington State. Um, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback about the website. Um, I, as an IT manager, am really interested in where we have opportunities to do a better job. So um, um, our ears are open. Agreed. Same with us. It's all about the feedback, right? OK. Um, so if uh, we don't have, I guess if, oh, look, finally, good. Another question. Yay. Um, so I assume we can use this site. Yes, Gary, this site has been available. Um, I think it's been, we've really, we really launched it in October, but we've been pushing it since, um, really since the beginning of winter time. So you're welcome to utilize the site as much as you possibly can. Please, please, please do so. And, um, you know, and let all of your coworkers know and your participants and your landlords and, and anybody else. And we, and it's, and we are actively continually building this up. So we'll utilize everybody's suggestions and um, and continue letting this grow and become a living entity, really all on its own. Um, we couldn't we couldn't do this without everybody's input. So that's very important to us. When we when we built the pathways, this is Becky. When we built the pathways to employment, we were able to go out to the communities and do focus groups to gather information. We didn't have that same opportunity with the pathways to housing, and so it is really important to us that we get feedback from people who are using the website. Um, don't don't worry about submitting something that we that we wouldn't give attention to. Any suggestions we get, we look at for technical feasibility for for whether there is um, policy guidelines. Um, I, I encourage our users to just embrace the concept that um, it never hurts to ask. And whatever we're asked to do, we look at very seriously. And if for some reason something is suggested that we're not able to pr uh, provide, we give the reason and the substantiation behind that. Um, so ask away. Um, so, we have a question um, that uh, can, can you remind us, is the site offered in multiple languages, Becky? It has, 
it has not yet been translated to other languages. Um, that is something that we have the technical feasibility to do, but I'm not sure we currently have the request from the project owner to do. But that is a fantastic um, suggestion that I'm not really sure has been brought up. And so I think that we'll be discussing that in our next meeting, um, the DBHR staff. So um, thank you very much. <laughs> um, and that would make perfect sense. Um, and so there's another, let's see who else. We have, um, is there a method to collect data on who applies and who is actually housed that is provided to HUD slash other agencies? Um, Kate, uh, who, um, who applies for what? FCS services, who applies, um, I'm, I'm unsure, I apologize. Can you, um, if, if you would like, I can pull you off and um, and unmute you, and you can more to more so housing. Okay, so um, I think that's a fantastic question for Commerce, and I do believe that we have Commerce on the phone, though I'm not asking them to speak, but we can um, maybe get you connected with them. I can't give you an 100% uh, honest answer about that. I'm sure there is data collection, um, but I'm and I'm not sure um, if it's who or so much how many. Um, so that would be a really great question to ask possibly Jeff Spring or Nick Yuva or somebody at Commerce who would have a little bit more in-depth information on that than I would. Um, let's see. Uh, if uh, I've been playing while you were walking through it and it is very user friendly. I also like the option to save rental history. Hey, Jessica, what a great feedback. <laughs> Thank you so much. That makes me feel wonderful. Um, and I'm sure that makes Becky feel great too. Um, we're is here to there serve. <laughs> user friendly is good. Is there discussion of including clean and sober housing services in this website? Absolutely. We are most certainly going to move forward with um, including um, Oxford housing as well as, um, as as much as we can. I think that right now we're working towards um, just finding, you know, just doing provider maps and being able to plug in um, plug in numbers. Becky and her staff did a fantastic job at making sure we had the ability to. Um, like the financial wellness and the supportive housing services, um, all when you go through all of that, you'll see like the benefits calculator. Those were all you know created from the ground up, and so it really is. We are we are really flying this plane while we build it, and so any suggestions we can get, we're happy to take. So I I do believe that adding clean and sober housing services on this website would be fantastic, Brian. Anybody else have any more questions that uh, we can field or or any statements that they would like to um, to make? I'm seeing a lot of thank you, Becky's. I love that. <laughs> I I say thank you, Becky, on a regular basis, even if you can't hear me, Miss Becky. No, that's no worries. It's, it's I we are here. Like I said, we're here for. We just we well, just want to make this as useful and accessible as is possible. And it could be you. Um, I believe it's it's also accessible from you know obviously from smartphones, but it's it's actually you know easily accessible from your smartphone as well. Um, set up to be to to be seen really easily, right? Um, when I mm -hmm. used my I, I have two smartphones, one for work and one for home, and my home my home phone is a little bit bigger, and the screen works perfectly for me. Actually, it's it's very user friendly, so super appreciative of that because um, not all of our participants, as everybody knows, has the accessibility to get to a computer, especially not for a long period of time, and so sometimes their phones are the best way to get things done, um, certainly when they're on their own and not in 
um, not in the, um, not with the help of their, um, maybe their case managers or um, whoever else may be assisting them as a support. So this is a fantastic opportunity. Um, so we are working to grow this website and continue it um, uh, filling full of wonderful information. And we definitely, um, for all of our attendees, we're definitely relying on um, feedback and information and letting us know, hey, this would be really helpful. Or this is something that we could really use. Um, let's see. I see, uh, I work with people trying to get their kids back from custody, uh, CPS custody. Sometimes housing is the only barrier to parents being reunited with their children. Is there a way to pick up their priority status so they can be reunited with their children faster? Um, Anne, that is a really great question. And, um, that's a that's a fantastic question, Anne. Um, I think that that's uh, that's a I would I would really like to talk to you about that um, in in depth. Uh, however, uh, I'm I'm sure there's more that can be done at some point, but without knowing a finite details. Um, I wouldn't be able to give you um, a, a well-informed opinion on the situation, and so um, if I want to send you my email, and and I would love for you to reach out to me, and I will do my very best to um, offer as many resources and guidance as I can. And just as these are all really great questions. So these wonderful long periods of silence tell me that maybe there's a great possibility that um, we are winding down and it might be nice to honor people's time and give them a little bit of their morning back. What do you think, Becky? Yeah, I think so. I think that um, obviously these presentations will get longer as we add content, but since this is such yeah. a new site, um, I yeah, it didn't take as long to present as anticipated. So yeah, I, I think if nobody has questions at this time, um I certainly am ready to wrap it up. Oh, okay. Well um it seems uh that's sweet news. Um it seems like maybe um seems like the, the website's working a little better than we thought it was as far as online goes and that maybe some of those barriers could have been some work firewalls, which is fantastic. Yay, big deep mm. breath, right? Um, so that's great. Okay, so everybody, um, just like Becky said, uh, let's see, can you show us how to find this page again? Becky, can you show them one more time to type in the HTTP and um, not to make the mistake that I did, which was to throw in the S and think that that was going to help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that doesn't help. Um, so I'm going to just go to, I'm, I'm assuming everybody can still see my desktop. So I, this is, a, this is me going in from the, from Bing and I'm just typing in And so when you go to this page, as I mentioned before, there are, there are quite a few pathways to housing. So it can be kind of confusing. Um, so we have asked Watech to make it easier for people to search on that um, and, and are continuing to negotiate with them um, because there are so many choices for pathways to housing on the web. Um, Bear with me for just a moment while I get you the URL. So if you were just to enter in pathways to housing.wa.gov, you should be able to navigate with relative simplicity. Pathways to housing.wa.gov. And I would also mention that the address is available on the brochure on the site. Uh-oh, that's not what we expected. 
we might be having some technical difficulty. Oh, well, how it's spelling. It was a typo. Oh, goodness. There you go. Pathways to housing .wa .gov. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for your help, Becky. Mm -hmm. Sorry about my typing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's early. I think we can I think we can excuse that. What do you think? <laughs> All right. Um so, uh, okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, please feel free to reach out to me, Amanda.polly, P O L L E Y, at hca.wa.gov. Um, I'll be sending a follow up email to everybody who um, attended and registered. And um, with, with uh, all of the information that we can squeeze into this, that is applicable. Um, if you have questions for me, that we're not regarding specifically pathways to housing, but more housing questions themselves, please feel free to reach out to me and I will do my very best to help as much as possible, um, including FCS questions as well. Um, Becky, again, I wanted to say thank you so much for taking time from your day today to help our housing community with this wonderful resource and explaining it, uh, how to utilize this resource as well. We really appreciate your time. You're welcome, anytime. Okay, housing community, I hope you have a fantastic Thursday um, and go out there with your successes and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Goodbye, guys. Bye, Becky. Thank you. Bye. I need, I'm going to call you. Okay, sounds great. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.